It's a public perception. I feel people don't give females the credit they deserve in the sport. They would rather choose a male over the female. Um, they are considered the inferior sex in the sport. I, from my perspective, I believe there's very little different, difference between the two. Um, yes, you've got to be strong. Yes, you've got to be fit. Um, but if you work hard enough, which Rachel does, I mean, she beats some of these guys and, and beat tests and push-up tests and pull-up tests. You, you really, you know, there, there is room for females in the sport. Welcome to another edition of In The Box Seat podcast. Warren Linferner, Andrew Harrison, and we have a very special guest on our podcast today. Her name is Taryn Mason. She is the Athlete Development Manager and the Marketing Manager of the South African Jockey Academy. And you'll find out in a moment as to why we have Taryn on the podcast today. But before we find out about why she's here, let's greet her and wish her well. How are you, Taryn? I'm good, thank you. You, all, all our guests, I don't know what it is, Andrew, when we have our guests, they all seem to arrive a little nervous, and the moment we say, take a deep breath, relax, there's absolutely nothing to be nervous about, they instantly just relax, which is wonderful. Yeah, well, we talk a lot of bollocks, so it's fine now. <laughs> no, it's lovely to have Taylor with us, thank you. Tell us a bit more about your job description, Athlete Development Manager and Marketing Manager of the South African Jockey Academy. What do you do, how do you do it, and when do you do it? <laughs> okay, so, um, you know, with most of the employees at the Academy, we all wear various hats. Um, I think we took after Mr. Graham Bailey on that one. You know, in the morning he would arrive to work in a suit, and then by the time he left in the afternoon, he was in his workwear. So, just naturally, we all did that. So, I mean, I started off at the Academy as a gym instructor, um, just working on the fitness of the, of the apprentices. Um, that went into a little bit of research um, and then over the past 10 years my job has evolved and I'm now currently managing the support team. So we have a biokineticist, a dietitian, a sports psychologist, myself as a sports scientist, the nursing sister, we all work together as a support team for the apprentices so my responsibility is to manage that team. Um, as well as I work closely with uh, Paddy Wynn with the recruitment, so we do the recruitment drives and the recruitment camp um, and then more recently I took over the social media and now that's grown into the marketing business. So you've been there, <coughs> excuse me, been there for 10 years? Yes, it'll be 10 years in January. And we've only met you now. <laughs> I keep quiet, I'm the workhorse in the background. <laughs> no, but I, I always hear the apprentices in the morning, they say, we've got beep test. <laughs> <laughs> what is a beep test? Alright, so the beep test, the infamous beep test, is a, a test that measures your VO2 max, so it's your maximal oxygen consumption, so how much oxygen your body is able to consume and, and use efficiently. Um, so essentially they, it's a shuttle of 20 meters and they run according to that beep and the beeps get a little bit faster. And then whatever score you get, it correlates to a VO2 max level. Okay. Well, if you tell them to shut up, they'd probably use the, the oxygen a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Taryn, um, the job that you hold obviously is a full-time job. You're fully employ a full-time employee at the South Africa Jock Academy. Okay, yes. I suppose it's so much that it can't be done part-time. It's a full-time no. thing. When I started, it was very part-time. I mean, it started with a couple of hours a week in I the gym. I remember that. Um, I, remember I that. think I actually met you the first yes. time I started yes. there. Yes. Um, so it went from very part-time and one of many jobs I had going on. And then more recently, actually now when Graham left in July and uh, Sister Bat was leaving us at the end of the year, I took on a lot of that res responsibility. responsibilities from them. Do you stay at the academy or you, and where do you stay? Are you uh, my husband manages a farm in Summerfeld, a cattle farm, um, Mr. Hamilton's old farm. Okay. Um, so he's there essentially flipping the farm. We live on the premises there, uh, um, which is great, you know, having, you know, you don't find many cattle farms around here. So. I didn't even know there was a cattle farm. No, not at all. So the first one. Okay. <laughs> Sugar cane and goat. That's all I see. <laughs> and horses, don't, uh, don't, don't forget the horses. But uh, okay, so oh, so you live here at Summerfelt on, on, on was the, the late Hamilton family farm. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, are you married, as you just said? Uh, yes. No kids as yet? Or, uh, one daughter. Okay. Yes, she's four years old. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So you are very busy then, with a young, young one and a full time job. Yes. Yes, luckily my mother-in-law lives with us, so okay. she helps a lot with our daughter. Okay. Um, you know, having both of us full-time employees, it's, yeah, can be a lot. The 
<laughs> you know, I know that some people will say, well, we beat on the same drum and, and, and Rachel gets her airtime, and she certainly deserves her airtime. And, and I, I, I feel, like I said to Keegan DeMello yesterday, she's the kind of person that the more airtime you throw at her and the more praise you throw at her, she just stays the humble person that she is. I mean, she's not an arrogant, attitudinal person at all. No. Um, and a couple of people have actually said to me, Andrew, at the races, she's very focused and she doesn't engage much with general people at the races. And I've asked her about that. And, and unfortunately, you know, there are some people out there that are quite harsh on, on other human beings. And we've all, we've all been the recipient of that. We were actually just talking about it at breakfast, which is completely unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. But that's for another debate. And she just chooses to stay focused, ignore the negativity and crack on. She is the only lady at this point at the South African Jockey Academy. That's a, a heck of a stat, it's a heck of a proud thing for the Jockey Academy. No, huge. Um, you know, we've, we've always opened our doors to female apprentices. Uh, we usually, I mean, in the past 10 years, every year get one or two of them that come through the system. Um, but, you know, by the time they get to track, they, they start realizing, you know, the intensity of the sport and, and how challenging it is to be a female in a male-dominated sport. So, unfortunately, we, you know, every year we cross our fingers and go, oh, this will be the one, she's going to make it. Um, and we finally have it. We finally have Rachel. Um, and she's, yeah, we're incredibly proud of her. But is it a physical thing or is it a psychological thing? Quite honestly, it's a public perception. I feel people don't give females the credit they deserve in the sport. They would rather choose a male over the female. and They are considered the inferior sex in the sport. I, from my perspective, I believe there's very little different, difference between the two. Um, yes, you've got to be strong. Yes, you've got to be fit. Um, but if you work hard enough, which Rachel does, I mean, she beats some of these guys and, and beat tests and push-up tests and pull-up tests. You, you really, you know, there, there is room for females in the sport, um, but it's a support that they don't get, which I feel. Is the I remember when, when Rachel first started riding, um, there's a bloke who found me on, on, on well, what was it, Facebook or something, and he said to me, ah, oh, but woman, he said, I'll never make it, she'll never yeah. make it, and then now, He's well, a dedicated I, follower. Well, I hope yeah. you've gone back to him and told him that he, he, oh, he, he needs I've his words. Told him. If you told him, yeah, good, yeah. because you know, why not people? You know, yeah. That's what we were talking. We had such a lovely breakfast this morning with Gavin Finzale and Tony Riverland and some of the team here at Summerfelt. And uh, that's what we were discussing. You know, it's, it's, it's just uh, it, let people try their best. Don't yeah, to I know, but you know, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter how good you are, whether you're male or female, if you can't take the, the mental side of it, you're in trouble. Yeah, but also you've got you've got to be able to do the job. Whether you, no, well, you can do the job, but if, if but if, if trainers start shouting at you, yeah. the other jockeys start shouting at you. So yeah, you've got to take it. I mean, and yeah. that's, yeah. It's at that's that a problem. Point that yeah. we, we lose the goals. Yes. It's at that point. You know, the riding masters do such an incredible job to get them to that level mm. um, of riding. I mean, like most all our apprentices, ninety percent of them come in with absolutely no riding experience. After six to seven months with us, they're ready for track already. Within 18 months, they're race riding. So all that initial training is there, but as soon as they get up here, it's very intimidating yeah, for them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's hard for our guys too. You know, Absolutely, it's, because it's, 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 you know, there's, uh, again, as we were saying at breakfast, it, it's about constructive criticism, good feedback, but, but shouting and screaming at people and, and insulting them, anybody's going to break down. You know, In this mentally. game, you've got to be able to take it. Yeah, yeah but simple as that. No, no, I disagree with you. You say you've got to take it. You've got to be able to take the Listen, well, well, You've got to take Rachel it, do started, it in a proper way. Rachel you know? started riding here when riding work here when she was yeah, very 14, young. Yes, yeah, fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. I wouldn't so like so to. She knew what was going to come. Uh, I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side, of Rachel. Please let me. No, you know, no, she'll put you in your place. Exactly, which but, is fantastic. But she's mentally strong. She's yeah. what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. I understand that you're trying to what you're getting to. What I am saying is, if you want to sh insult somebody, if you want to discipline somebody, or you want to crap on them for a bad ride or whatever it is or you've done a job badly do it in a forceful way but not in an insulting debilitating way that you're going to make the person a nervous wreck because you're going to get nowhere that's the point i make what game have you been in <laughs> well i know that's uh, anyway but uh, that's just everyone's opinion but back to the um intake for next year that's what we're so excited about because you're right we've been battling well i say we the industry has been mm -hmm. battling to find girls and 
There's apparently five next year, is that right? That's Tell us right. about that story. Where did that journey start? Where did you find these ladies? Tell us about them. Um, so every year we do a recruitment drive. Um, so we send our team out to the different race courses throughout the country and we set up interviews with students. Uh, obviously we have the initial requirements of height and weight because if you don't have that right, that's, you know, you're going nowhere in the sport. And we'll obviously look at fitness requirements and stuff. So we did a lot of advertising um, to get it out there. But to be quite honest, Rachel has been our biggest ambassador in this. It's because of her that we had so much more interest from females. Well, that was going to be my next... Uh, I know everyone's schedule doesn't marry you know, at this time when we were doing the podcast, and I actually wanted to get Rachel to come and join us. Rachel, um, very busy. <laughs> absolutely, because that was going to be one of the questions. Is you know, her success and her determination and will to win and will to do well a result of such a big female intake? And you just answered that. No, 100%. No. Did she go with you to this, any of the schools or to wherever you went no, to? No, so really? you know, they're so busy at the academy. Um, she was very involved in the recruitment week when we had all of them here, where, which was so amazing for the girls. The hours were massive, like, you know, having a celebrity in the room. And it was nice for Rachel as well to, to you know, get that recognition. Um, so she, she helped us with the recruitment week just to spend some time with them. And then obviously she's just made head girl, so next year she'll be a big mentor to them. Yeah, sure, Andrew. It's a, it's, it's a, I wouldn't, can you say it's a fairy tale all just coming true? I mean, I suppose it is a bit of a fairy tale because you sound know. like Thistleton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of fairy tales. Yeah, lots of fairy tales in this beautiful game, and that's why we've got to continue looking at the positive. But she, uh, these five ladies, uh, I don't, I don't, if you don't know, I mean, I can't remember his name most of the time. Do you know who? Can you? Do you got? Do you know their names or do, where do they come from? Well, I'm not sure if I can share that information. You know, we're still going through the process of okay, affecting okay. them and stuff. Um, I mean, as it is, we actually have seven females for next okay. year, but one's international. She's just recently pulled out. She's going to retry for next year. Okay. Um, and then uh, we've got six South Africans, um, three, two from Johannesburg. Okay. Uh, another two from here and one from Cape Town. Okay, okay, so, so sorry, I should, uh, the way I, I should have asked the question is where, tell us where the girls are from. Obviously, you, uh, uh, you can't disclose the, the personal details as yet. They haven't even arrived at the academy, so I apologize for that. <laughs> so they, were, they went through that when well, you have a week of, of sort of orientation? Yes, a uh, yeah. recruitment week. We were finding, you know, we, we would take in about 15 students. I'm, I'm talking about eight years ago now, 10 years ago. We would take in about 12 to 14 students and within the three months of their probation period we were having huge dropouts um, and that was problematic because you're taking young students out of their schooling um, away from home into this new environment to then only then throw them back home you know so we started the recruitment camp so after the initial interviews they spend an entire week with us um, so they get a good understanding if this is what you know they want to do. I mean, they're up early at Hoppers Four, mucking out stables. Um, they, they're essentially a first-year apprentice for, for a week, and then we are able to put them through a series of tests. So the beep test, and we look at their body fat. We have the dietitian and um, the riding masters do exercise and lessons with them, put them on the lunge. So you know, until you're actually on a horse, you're not going to know if this if this is for you. You know, without the experience, they're all coming in with with nothing. Um, so yeah, it's a really good week to get an understanding of them, for them to understand what the sport is, and since then we've had, uh, now I can't work on the stats, but very little drop out at that point. Okay. I mean, in your opinion, I mean, obviously you, you, know, you, you would want it to work, you, you, it's hard to assess at such an early stage and only having them for a few days in their, in their course that they've come to already. Do you think that in, that, in, the, in, the, in the group of ladies there could be one or two that could go on to, to be nearly as successful or Rachel, as Rachel, I mean, have you got hope that there's something there? I hope so. Uh, I really do hope so. Like I say, you know, Rachel's really spear, spearheaded the females in the sport. Sure. Um, and I'm hoping the girls will follow suit and learn something from her. Um, I mean, this hasn't come easily for Rachel. It doesn't come easily to any of the apprentices. You, you have to have that grit. You have to work hard. You have to, like you say, when someone shouts, you just put your head down and, and try and not take it personally. Uh, when things get exciting and you've got all this attention, you need to be humble. There, you know, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes in, in becoming a professional jockey. And I, I do believe that we have some very hopeful candidates oh, in the group. Yeah, well, it seems it's tough for everybody. I mean, I just the two white caps have just arrived at Ashford. So they always practice on, on our horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brevin and, and Ashton. Oh, yes. uh, but you can see they're nervous. 
Yeah. Uh, you need an attitude like James. Yes. James? <laughs> James? Uh, Lee Harbour. But James came from a traditional horse race. Traditional horse race. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so well, is he chilled? He's happy. Yeah, he's chilled. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't care. I, 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 I met... He doesn't care if he gets fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I met him and the, the whole academy team with the lovely award ceremony uh, at this very venue. And already they're being awarded, I know, mainly for their improvement and, and their schoolwork, etc. But look like a fine bunch of, of, of young riders to come, hopefully. Um, we speak about the girls, because that was what the focus of this podcast was, and to hear about the exciting intake for next year. But we don't want the boys to get upset, to feel that they're being ignored, which of course they're not, because it's a team and, and it's a job that gets done, male or female. So I was also saying earlier on. The world's changed. For those out there that feel women are, are, are not good enough to do certain women, there's, I know more women that can do more things than I can do. So, woman power. That's what it's all about. And, and yeah, well, they can't take on Eben Etzebeth. <laughs> Who's Eben Etzebeth? <laughs> Who's Eben Etzebeth? He plays soccer. Oh, so soccer, you see, that's what I'm saying. I don't know anything <laughs> about soccer. I'm, I've been invited to the cricket on, on Friday. <laughs> I've been invited to the cricket. What's I don't know. I just know there's cricket at Kingsmead, Hollywood Bet Kingsmead. Um, I'm going to go for an hour or two before night racing. And uh, I said to the gentleman that invited me, I said, I'm dying to come to the cricket. I can't wait to see how many goals they score. Oh, right. that's, what I know. that's what I know about other sports. But that's fine. That's me. So the point I'm making is whether you're a plumber, you're a doctor, you're a whatever you are, male and female, if you can do the job, go for it. Back to the boys. Um, the current team at the moment are... Doing well, Kelly yes. Tiles is at the top of my the first name that comes to mind, yes. and many others that are see, um, uh, super Sichler Schling. Well, lots of these winners coming through, and, and what's next year's intake for the boys looking like? So we have a total of 12 coming in for the next year. So we actually have a nice split. If, if all the girls come, that I expect it'll be a 50-50 split between boys and girls, which is probably I think is the first for us. Um, but then again, we have a, a nice cohort of guys coming through. Also, evenly spread across the country. Um, yeah, but a, a nice cohort of them. Okay, let us um, talk about food. Um, <laughs> Mr. Marius Nell has taken over as acting headmaster in the, in the retirement of, of uh, Mr. Graham Bailey. I thought his speech that he delivered here the other day was fantastic because English is not Marius' first language. Uh, he did well in, his, in the prize giving and uh, from what I hear on the ground he's doing well as acting headmaster. Yeah, amazing, an absolutely amazing job. Um, it was a big adjustment for all of us when Graham left. Um, we knew it was coming, you know, it was coming for a long time and we all was trying, you know, all trying to hustle into our positions and you know, get things going when he leaves. Um, but Marius, yeah, Jamie hates the public speaking, he hates the limelight, um, he just likes to be a teacher, that's, that's his passion is being a teacher, not being a headmaster, but oh, we're so proud of him, he is, he, yeah. yeah. You've met Marius yeah, now, he's so a wonderful, us. wonderful human yeah. being. And, uh, the, why I mentioned food is he did tell me at the ceremony last week that there's a new gentleman that's taken over the catering and, and the, uh, tell us about him. Yes, so Johan's our new kitchen manager um, he comes with a lot of chef experience which is great, you know, you know for food, food's a, a massive thing in a jockey's life, you know, yes. they, they manage their lives around food all the time so we want to be able to provide healthy, delicious meals to our, to our students, um, not just, just the, the brand of everyday meals. Um, so put a bit of fun back into the food um, and, and give a bit of, you know, put a bit of effort in. It's yeah, what is our fun that uh, they're talking about? They don't want greasy sausages anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they will always complain about something. It doesn't uh, matter what we do. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> no, there will always be a complaint, especially when you're serving people in the hospitality trade. Oh, but that's, 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 is it, I mean, it must be difficult. Does each, if there are 30 students, just using a number, I mean, do you have to go to each individual student? Does each person get a, a particular meal prepared for them, or is it basically something that's going to suit everyone? I mean, how, how do you cater for these so many different tastes? Um, so we categorize them into three levels. So there will be an, a, a low carb diet, uh, a, a managed carb diet, and a, a normal diet, essentially. And what we have to do with the kitchen manager is make sure that the meals can cater to, to all of them. So we wouldn't, for instance, uh, 
do hamburgers and chips because the person who can't have carbs is just going to sit with a patty, you know, so <laughs> yeah. we've got to be creative in the way meals are done. Sure. Um, and again, with that support team I spoke about, we, each individual apprentice gets an individual program from their training to their diet, everything is tailor-made for them. Um, so yeah, so, we, so the easiest way is to categorize them and then we obviously have to have people on duty to ensure that they aren't overdoing it. Um, you know, you don't want them indulging and then having to lose too much. Sure, that's, sure. That's When's cool. weighing? Thursdays? Uh, Mondays and Fridays. Mondays and Tuesdays Fridays. and Fridays. Because, uh, what is your opinion, uh, um, Taryn, uh, when you talk about your indulging, because every human being and everybody is different and, and I'll, give my, I'll give my experience, I know you don't want to hear it, but I'll give you my experience just now. But some people say that you know obviously you should watch what you eat and then indulge a little and then put the handbrake on again I mean I find that that works for me I mean I, I go to I, I'm doing a training boxing program etc and I've been battling with my weight and uh, I was told from some of the guys there do your diet you know keep watching what you eat but then for a day or two let rip not let rip as in eat no, 10 kgs of chocolates no. uh, have a treat or two leave the diet let the hand break off and then come back with a hand break and yeah. you know and i must say since i've done that stop start stop start it's helped me a lot so i don't know do you agree with something like that yeah, or, 100%. Or? i mean you don't want to end up binge eating <laughs> you know you, you want to control your, your consumption of calories and you know treat here and there is, is fun and like i said we want our meals to be enjoyed right? yes, yes, yes yes we don't want them to have this horrible relationship with food you know so I mean we, we treat our guys once in a while with you know if it's a Christmas or Valentine's or whatever um, we'll do it with them but I think the main thing is that we, we're giving them we're teaching them the schools how to manage that weight sure. so when I started about 10 years ago I done a research study on on the apprentices looking at how weight loss affects their mood states and, and overall health and well-being and reaction time and we were finding that some of these apprentices were losing up to three to four kgs in a mere couple of days before a race meeting. And I was just like, that's crazy. I mean, you're on this massive horse going, you know, 60 to 70 k's an hour. I mean, it was a bowel an hour. It's crazy. And then you have, you know, weaknesses in sugar level. I mean, they would waste, they would sit in the jockey room and spit into a cup just to try and get as dehydrated as possible. And that's not okay, you yes. know. In the short term, there are health effects in that, but in the long term, you're looking at like terrible bone health, and then they fall and they break something, and then you know. So our goal at the academy is to teach them how to manage that weight. So have the treat, but then go for a run afterwards, and sure. you know manage it not by restricting what you're eating, but by your output. So track is amazing for these guys. They burn a heap of calories in the morning with with track, and you'll find when they go home over Christmas, they'll come back a little bit heavier because yes. they haven't had that track work. Um, and get into the gym, do your regular aerobic um, training and stuff. Don't waste, you know. If you start wasting and you start eating badly, your body responds to it. It goes into a survival mode, essentially. So if you're wasting and then you don't eat for a little while, then all of a sudden you're eating, your body's going to retain as much sure, as possible. Sure. So yes, have a treat, but as long as you're managing your weight in a safe and healthy way. Sure, sure. Yeah. So a lot of those senior jockeys will be bad role models. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go... To Taryn, you and me for a week. <laughs> well, I said so you We've got a doggy bag there. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, you put your fried egg in there. No, I, 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 <laughs> now what's happened now is nobody believes that I can cook. I mean, I mean, I don't know why. Some say I can't tip. Some say I can't talk. Some say I can't walk. Some say I can't drive. I can't tip. I can't cook. I can't do anything. But you know what? Never mind what they say. I brought the proof here. So, so the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. Christmas time shortbread. I made a lovely fresh batch of shortbread. There's a parcel here for uh, Tawanda and his team to enjoy. There's a parcel here for you and your family to enjoy. But before you go, you have to give a piece to, to Taryn and a piece to Anya. You didn't spit on them, did you? No, never. Freshly baked out of the uh, oven last month. I mean, last week. <laughs> and uh, so lovely fresh shortbread that I made to share with you at Christmas time. Let's talk uh, about holidays because everybody needs a break. A lot of the... Uh, Racing fraternity sort of say, and again, everyone's entitled to their opinions. Well, the youngsters shouldn't have time off, they should be working extra hard, etc. etc. But you know, if you live in a faraway place and you've been at the academy and you haven't seen your family for a while, you know, you'd want to go home and see your family. So, I think 
a ra rest for everybody is needed. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, in racing, there is no on and off season. It's sure. full time all year round. I mean, we have a race meeting every day of the year in the country, barring Christmas or, I mean, a few couple of days. So, you know, for other athletes, they have, you know, if you look at your rugby players or your soccer players, they have that pre-training season, they have the off season, they have the time to rest and recuperate between, you know, the mental, it, you know, like we say, mental is very important, have that time, that time off. Um, our apprentices do go home. A lot of them, our race riding apprentices still race throughout, sure. throughout December. Um, they'll either stay with a, a friend or fa a family friend in the area. We shut down, though. our staff definitely need the break. We are open on the 3rd, so it's not the longest <laughs> Christmas break. <laughs> um, but it, it's very, very important that these guys, and also their families, they don't get to see their families throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so absolutely. Yeah, a little bit of compassion does nobody yes. any harm. No. Now, uh, talking of breaks, I'm going to my laptop today, I'm submitting three batches of leave. Not one, not two, but three. The first one's for two days, the second one's for two days, and the third one's for a week. Make sure you allow it, please. <laughs> I don't know. Depends what the short bread says. Like. <laughs> yeah, short bread's a different class. I'll be going on a month leave. Let, um, we've, we've spoken about uh, marketing, that's one of your responsibilities. The awards we've touched on was a phenomenal event. But there's a video that's come out and there's numerous photos. Where can people go and view those to see what, what a great occasion it was and the successes of the Academy? Yeah, no, we had so much media at our prize giving. It was amazing. I was saying to Tawanda, it was so nice for the apprentices, you know, to feel a little bit like a celebrity. Yes. Um, so yeah, we have obviously our Facebook account, so the SA Jockey Academy account there, and our Instagram account are the most active. And then we have a website, which is the sajockeyacademy.com. All our videos will be posted up on there. Okay. Is your uh, website up to date? Yes, as much as Good. it can be. I will be updating it Never again before leave. <laughs> no, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Are you telling us it is? Have you seen that new website? I haven't seen the new website because I never used to watch it because it was so out of date. <laughs> no, we have a very up to date new website. Yeah, well, at least he's honest, I suppose. At least he's honest. Now, um, we've got a few other things to touch on. Please relax uh, okay. and uh, your water. If you want tea or coffee, we'll touch it. If you want to add any contribution, you're most welcome. But bit of news, uh, some sad, uh, I don't like to talk about negativity and sad things, but this is reality. Uh, some time ago, I don't know if we mentioned it, and I think uh, even if we did mention it, we'll mention it again. We heard about the, pro the passing of Mr. Brian Bernard, prominent owner, um, not a happy time in, in, in their family's lives, but sadly Brian passed away. Yes, yeah, he was a big supporter. He was a big supporter. Yeah. yeah, he certainly was. So Brian Bernard, uh, may his uh, soul rest in peace. Colin Govan Basami, we were heard this morning of uh, another racehorse owner, Gavin Van Zell, shared the news with us, and I see it's come out on social media that Mr. Colin Govan Basami passed away last night. Yeah. He had the yellow silk with the green cap. Green cap, yeah. yeah. So uh, to his family, uh, our thoughts and prayers go to you, to the passing of uh, Mr. Uh, Colin Govan Basami. And then, uh, the third tragic news we heard was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Kevin Soul was uh, recently awarded numerous awards at the KZN Breeders Ceremony. Um, I had the privilege of meeting him. What a wonderful man. He was kidnapped uh, and uh, then murdered. Yeah, that's, that's South Africa. Very sad. So to Kevin Soul and to his family, our deepest condolences go out to the Governor Sami family, the Soul family and the Bernard family. And uh, yeah, as I say, not nice to talk about sad things, but it is part of life and it is something that we need to address and send our condolences. Taryn, you were just telling us off air, Andrew and I hadn't heard of it, but there was another tragic uh, incident in, in New Zealand. Tell us a little bit more about that. I just saw from headlines this morning, um, I think it was Megan Taylor. Megan Taylor, Megan yes. Megan Taylor, an apprentice in New Zealand, uh, went down in a race yesterday or the day before three of them went down and, and from what I've heard she passed away from that fall. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just so tragic. Tragic, tragic, tragic. So to Megan Taylor, uh, we, we haven't had the privilege of, of, of meeting you but we've read the news. Uh, to your family, to Megan Taylor's family, our condolences go out to you as well. But a race riding accident in New Zealand has claimed the life of this young no, apprentice. No, but people don't actually realise how dangerous mm -hmm. race riding is. I mean, I watched uh, a Formula One race with it. Chinese bloke was a Chinese one. He crashed it at Silverstone, mm. smashed his car into the rail, going at about 300 kilometers an hour, mm. and he got out, no problem. Yeah. The car was left, he squashed up against the Anka. Race riding, you fall off. Yeah. That could yeah. be the end of you. Absolutely. And, and you know, there was 
two incidences yesterday, two races yesterday. Um, in the one race, it was uh, Mr. Kurson's horse, Beckoning Beauty. Uh, jockey came across, had to be eased up, horse head in the air. Uh, the last race, one horse went on to the other and went on to the other, and then he took Jason Gates uh, onto, the, uh, onto the inside of the race course. So it's dangerous out there, you know, it is dangerous out there. Talking about dangerous, I nearly got flattened by three trucks. It's dangerous out everywhere yeah. at the moment. But yeah, the point is it's, it's dangerous on a race course. It's dangerous on a horse's back. And, and those that continually criticize jockeys, yes, we can say as public and as punters and as owners and as trainers, well, that was maybe the wrong judgment and it wasn't a great ride. Everyone's entitled to opinion. You can say to a trainer, I don't think you trained that great. Next time out, we'll come back for another day. But at the end of the day, uh, it's a tough, tough sport. It's a tough industry. It's a tough job being a jockey. And it's damn dangerous, as we've just heard. So, yeah, I think we need to cut a bit more slack. Yeah. And, 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 and to try and get the riders, which of course they do, you know, to try and be as safe as possible out there. But it's... Well, it's most of them keep trying to keep away from each other, but sometimes horses just... Horses go, correct, horses that go. I mean, there were also two races yesterday where the, the one horse won of Doug Campbell's that shifted across the course. So you, you, you on an animal that can't talk, you don't know what its next move is going to be. But uh, very sad news for, for all those um, that have passed away. Fiona Ramsden's exiting the country, is that right? Yep, she came back to England. And back to England. Her and her two or three daughters. Two. Two daughters. So to the Ramsden family, all the very best to you. We shall miss you, but uh, I'm sure on social media and uh, etc. we'll be able to follow your footsteps overseas. The Guineas, the Hollywood Bets, big race meeting down at Kenilworth. The debate has been on and on. Is it Cousin Casey? Is it... Um, Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. Uh, is it Mike de Cox's horses? Is it Shoemaker? Who is it, in your opinion? I spoke to somebody know, yesterday, they said it's none of them. Yeah, I know. That's a bit of a... That's a, the strongest guineas we've had in a long time. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm the strongest field. Uh, so, you know, the two favourites are drawn white. Kennel is not really such a problem because you got that long straight. Um, Charles Dickens, I suppose, the way he won last time, he came from the clouds to win. Yeah. Uh, but the jockey yeah. hasn't moved on Charles Dickens, the jockey hasn't moved on... Yeah, but sometimes cousin. when they do move, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that is uh, also very true, that is also very true. There was a horse, Dee's Dinah was showing it to me yesterday. Uh, Dean Canamo, uh, not Dean Canamo, Brett Crawford, I think it's Brett Crawford, Kaya Stables, and it's number one. I forget the name of the horse, it's number one. We, we watched its last run uh, on, on, on screen yesterday, and it was a fantastic run. Uh, Dees is of the opinion that could be the lurker. Yeah, it could be. That's a, uh, uh, no, at my uh, command. At my command or something. Yeah, just the name escapes me. I'll find it on the phone. Oh, I can't find it. There's load shedding. The signal's down. <laughs> that would be nice if... if uh, because when I had a winner yesterday, Boogie Shoes. Yes. Gary, uh, Gary Rich. Yes. That's a half-sister to Schumacher. Yes. And Zapatillis. Yeah, that's right. Boogie Shoes won yesterday. Of course, Nas had two runners yesterday. I backed the one. The one that I backed ran it tailed off last, and the one I didn't back stuck me out of everything. Oh, luckily, it was load shedding. I couldn't get on. <laughs> but it uh, just shows you the, uh, the game, how unpredictable it is. And uh, you'd expect it to tip first, second, third, fourth in every single race. You've yeah. done it many times. That's why you? we're still working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so big race. So your, who's your first choice in the, in the Guineas? You have to go with Charles Dickens. Yeah, I, I, I mean, agree. The way you won last time, right? you have to go with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like Charles Dickens uh, from Cousin Casey. It is Cousin Casey. I always get uh, the one uh, confused with but Tony Rivlin's one. It's a hot field. Though. It's a hot field. What a great field it is. Okay. Uh, you're not going to Cape Town, no? No, you don't even go. To, we've got to pull you with a twitch to get you to come to Summerfeld. Never exactly. mind Cape Town. <laughs> um, John Freeman has uh, distributed uh, his calendars sent up a box and I've been distributing them to Summerfeld Clubhouse to uh, various racing people so thanks to John Freeman for his uh, contribution and, and, and generosity with his calendars Soccer World Cup it's an Argentina France final is that right? Could be uh, so, you, soccer. so your soccer's knowledge is about as good as mine no. <laughs> okay Bloodstock bonus Gavin Fenzel was telling us that his bloodstock South Africa bonus, 100,000 rand. 
Uh, Sean Terry had two runners in the two baby races during the week. He won both. He got the bonus for both. Uh, I think he's already Gavin Van has got one of them down in the Cape. Or Gareth got one of them. Gareth, yeah. It's a massive bonus. 100,000 rand from Bloodstock. Yeah, I know, but you have to have a horse to win it. Well, that's why they want you to go and buy a horse. Yeah, yeah. it's a good incentive. A very good incentive. Um, we haven't spoken well, about that. I say the biggest gamble in, in racing is actually buying a yearling. Buying a yearling, absolutely. I haven't, uh, we haven't touched on our sponsors, which is score six and score ten. We're waiting for you to get your shirt, because the last time you wore a shirt, it was like you were wearing a wetsuit. Wet yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't know if you saw that edition. You, you, did you? You know, he was wearing a wetsuit. That's why we both you and I need to go to town to go into an eating program. <laughs> Uh, and do a few beep tests, but the problem is that when we do our beep tests, the machine will just go beep, and it'll, it'll be brown it'll red. Be flatlined, yeah. Flatlined, yeah. Um, so thank you to score six and to score ten for our, our shirts and for the sponsorship. Go and get your bets on Tab Gold. There's another bet card call, and you've paid any attention to that. I took so a. I can't back a winner. I'm going to back on. <laughs> I went, of course, and tried. I took a whole uh, thing of bets. Uh, with a card call and uh, I think I spent 180 rand and when I went to the lady to cash in she gave me back about 19 rand 50 so yeah the card call is the new bet and we're going to have Patrick Loka early in the new year to come and talk to us about card call and all other betting opportunities. Uh, as we said the baby races the Millers have been firing in KZN and uh, Terry firing in Joburg so it's that time of year when all these babies are coming out. Yeah I just hope we race it. It's got still on Sunday. Yeah. It's, uh, how's the rain? I mean Terry you up in this area, has it, the rain been as bad here as it has been down at the coast? Oh, it's been bad. I yeah, mean, every morning I'm having rain. to pull my husband out of the mud somewhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's rain, unbelievable. Uh, it, it, I know, we need the rain. Uh, I'm not so disrespecting the rain, but it's, it's just unreal for this time of the year. No, we've had a lot, but then we must back the Ashburton horses because they've been able to work. Have they? Yeah, they can't work. Okay, so we must back Ashburton horses. What else is on the list? Um, I, know, I, was, I was thinking about you this morning when I was getting dressed. <laughs> I was putting on my shoes and I looked up at the, at the cabinet and I saw two awards. And I looked and I thought, should I bring them or should I not? And I thought, no, I'm not going to bring them because you will insult me. But I'm going to give you the chance to insult me anyway. Did you think that a mug like me would get two racing awards in one year? You've got to be proud. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that drink around here. <laughs> <laughs> so I left my awards and I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to bring them up because you're just going to insult me. But you and your, you, I mean, you've, you've, you've done how many years in, in the industry? You've got more awards than, I don't know. You've had an award. Ah, oh, please, of course you've had awards. Well, well, then, well then you're doing something wrong then. Um, we've got our schedule, Andrew. You must just to share with everybody this is the last, um, the last point before we close up and we thank Taryn. Today's Thursday, we've obviously had Taryn on, on the show about the Lady Apprentices and about the Apprentices in general. Next week, Tuesday, we're recording. We're oh, going we? to have Michelle oh. Wing as our guest. Okay. And we can't wing it, uh, <laughs> so we'll have to prepare, which we always do. And then we're going on a bit of a break. The reason why we're recording on Tuesday and not Thursday is because I'm out of here. It's the first two days that you're going to be signing my leave. I'm gone. No, well, I was actually quite disappointed because we had actually had for Thursday. Are we having a Christmas then, lunch on yeah, Tuesday? Then we, then we could have got your cash because you wouldn't have been there. Oh, uh, so you could have eaten double. I could have, I could double. have had a 500 gram steak instead <laughs> of a 250. <laughs> but you just heard from the lady that you can't have too much red meat. <laughs> she didn't say my new shirt. She didn't say that. But, uh, so we're recording on Tuesday next week and it's our Christmas lunch. We'll be with uh, Michelle Wing, etc. And then there's a break. And then there's a break. Our production team are all dancing because they also need a break. Everybody needs a break. It hasn't affected my nerves in any way. No, <laughs> stop it now. <laughs> we need a break. And uh, our first podcast, I think, will be back on Thursday, the 12th of January. And uh, we'll just, yeah, we'll be back in full swing. So that's our schedule. But for today, Taryn, thank you very much. It's been lovely to hear a bit of your story and to hear about the Academy story and, and you guys and girls. Are already, we can see you can see the difference in the social media, in the marketing, in the production, in the way the, the apprentices are performing uh, a job well done. So lovely to have you here. Thanks for telling us about the new ladies and the new intake, and we look forward to them meeting them next year. Sure. Thank you for having me. Oh, a huge honour to be here. I love watching your guys' show. 
And it's amazing how you guys are showcasing the behind the scenes of racing. So thank you to you guys. You see, no, thank you, you see, uh, nothing wrong with us podcast. I keep know. telling you, it's a group one winning Equus Award winning podcast. What more do you want? I've seen some dirty comments, I promise. Oh, oh, you don't worry about it. Always dirty. will be. Oh, always will be. You ignore that. I mean, you really, you just got to feel for those no, no, no. keep Good insulting one. one another. Thanks, Andy. Thanks to the whole team, to Taryn. It's been great. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Um, I'm sure we'll, although we're recording on Tuesday, it'll only go out on the usual time slot. But that's a wrap from us. Um, nothing else to add. Be safe, and uh, we'll see you as always. And thanks to Tawanda and Apiwe. Tawanda and Apiwe. I think I should get his name right. Apiwe. Time. Well, thanks for helping me because I think I called Apiwe Sam or something last <laughs> last week. But Apiwe and uh, Apiwe is uh, learning the ropes, eh? He's quite sharp in it, isn't he? <laughs> he's, quite, he's very sharp and he's got a lovely big broad smile and he's just uh, happy to have him. To wonder, what does it say on his shirt? Don't play the same... Boom. What? <laughs> no, we don't play the same... Boom. What's a boom? <laughs> I don't think we should answer that. Okay, that's a wrap from all of us. We are going home and uh, preparing for racing. Our next race meeting is on Friday night. Friday night, eh? What a pleasure. I love Friday night racing. I don't. I'm usually asleep. Uh, <laughs> that's a wrap from uh, Grumpy Andrew, myself and Taryn. We'll see you as always in the number one box. Be safe. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here and uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy in the box seat podcast from last week